Hello, this is Ben Musby, Genomics Outreach Coordinator for NCBI again. And today we're going to learn about basic Linux commands. Two caveats before we begin. First, if you are a Linux user, this tutorial is going to be too basic for you. What I would suggest is turn off this video and go to Module 4, DNA Seq Mapping. If you're not sure that you're enough of a Linux user, to benefit from this. You might as well watch the first few minutes and then you can skip through until you feel like we've met you at your particular skill level. Caveat number two is that we've based this heavily on the software carpentry program. While we're not using any of their data files, uh, we use some fairly similar examples and I will try to point out when we do that, and I would really encourage you, if you are new to Linux, to go try out the software carpentry thing. Additionally, if you are at an institution where they offer software carpentry courses, go check them out. And if you're not, you should encourage your institution to offer software carpentry or a similar thing. Here. I am on a command line on the Mac. There are many ways to get into the command line, and some popular ones are outlined in the handout for the DNA Seq section. So you can grab them from there. The first command I like to use is who am I? This tells me my username on whatever system I am. Another question I can ask is where am I? This will tell me where on the system I am. As you can see, I'm a couple of levels up from the bottom, and for the purposes of this lecture, we are going to stay there. I can also ask the question very easily, what was I just doing? I do this by typing ls-ltr. Great, so I can see all of the directories that are here in my home directory on this computer. Now I'd like to go with you through what ls-ltr means. So ls simply lists what's in my current directory. ls-l lists the stuff in my directory and it shows its long form attributes. Periodically I am going to type clear and that's simply to uh, erase the screen and move my cursor up to the top. So if I type ls-lt, I can see the timestamps of things shown here in uh, most recent uh, to oldest. But say I had a lot of files in a particular directory and it scrolled off the screen, I would want to see most recent at the bottom. And that is why I use the ls-ltr command shown here. Another thing that you might want to do when you're first starting to learn Linux is to make directories. The way you would make a directory here is you would say mkdir and a directory name. I like to use foo for things when I'm doing demonstrations. As you'll learn when you progress in your Linux life, foo is a metasyntactic variable. It can be used for lots of things. But say you write some sort of program that creates 10,000 different temporary files. You'll want an easy way to delete them. And putting foo in each of the file names is a great way to do that. So I can make a directory called foo. Now, if I hit ls-ltr, which I could do by finding it in my recent commands, just by pressing, I'm now just pressing the up arrow and then pressing the down arrow. If I go up and find it, I can now see that the most recent thing I've done is to create the directory foo. I can see this is a directory because this digit here is a D. These other things talk about uh, read, 
right and executable access for me and my group and all users. As you can see, not all users have right access to this directory. I can change that by using the command chmo. For the purposes of this workshop, we're going to use the command chmode777, but you might want to talk to your sysadmin or someone who can advise you on how to use Linux uh, about what settings to set. When you initialize the cloud instance for the hands-on part of this workshop, you're going to use the command chmode400. Uh, that's an important thing to do for internet security. So once again, we've made the directory group. We're going to check once again by pressing up, and we'll see now that we the directory foo is still there, and everyone now has right access to that directory. Great. So I'm going to clear the screen, and now I'm going to move into the move in directories by hitting the CD command. Also, I can tab complete things in Linux. This is very important. So if I hit CDF, I can then press tab to complete that command, as you can see here. Now, I can check by pressing the up button if there is anything in foo. Sure enough, there is nothing in foo. And I'd like to show you how to make a file. So what we're going to do is use the command echo. And we're going to echo hello exclamation point. We're going to press enter. Now what that does is it just echoes the command hello to our screen. Alternatively, once again, by pressing up, we can bring it back. We can echo the word hello, exclamation point, to a file. We call this file R. Now, if we look at our files, we have one file that is called bar. Note that it is not a directory, and that can be seen here. We can make a directory called foo2 and change the directory into it. If we want to go back to our directory foo, we can go back one level. And once again, we can always check what's in that directory. We see that we have a file called bar and a directory called foo2. Now, if we want to see what's in bar, there are many ways to do this. Three popular ways are more, cat, and less. I'm going to go over the cat and less commands as they will be useful to us later in this discussion. So we can say cat bar, and that will print out the contents of the file bar. We can also say less bar, and that will take us in to the less interface, where we can see everything that's in there. If we want to get out of the less interface, we can hit Q. Also, for any commands in the Linux uh, environment, there should be a man page, which is a manual. So we can go to man less and look at the description of this program. So here are commands, and the nice thing about less is we can navigate uh, around using the up and down keys, the page up and down keys. We can also search for, say, the word right by hitting slash and then typing what we're searching for. We can get out of the less functionality because man pages are by default displayed in less by using the letter Q. We can also look at a man page for ls. ls means the list directory contents. And you can see that there are many, many options here that I will let you explore on your own.
So to recap what we've done so far, we've created two directories and we've also made a file called bar, which contains the string hello exclamation point. Once again, by typing or scrolling up to lsltr, we can see how we did that. If we remember that we made a command, but we can't remember exactly what we typed, we can use the control R function to search for the thing we typed. So for example, if we wanted to go back to our last make directory command, we would type control R MKDIR. We can see that the last thing we typed is to make directory foo2. Now if we did that again, that's not what we want. So what we'll do now is to press control C and get out of that. That's an important note. Control C will get out of most things in the Linux environment. Now what I would like to show you how to do is use a text editor in the Linux environment. Most Linux environments come with simple, several simple text editors, including Nano and Vim. I personally use Vim when I'm in the Linux environment, but it, there's a bit of a steep learning curve, and I'd encourage you to check it out and maybe print a sheet, cheat sheet. However, for the purposes of this course, we are going to use Nano. If you're using Git Bash, Nano may not work, but what you can do is you can make a file in a text editor, such as TextPad. Please don't use Microsoft Word for this exercise and then save it as a plain text file, and then you can open it, uh, whatever your Linux implementation is. Great. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to go into Nano. When I'm in Nano, I would like to make a file with three columns. So the first column, I want put the letters A, B, C. The second column, I am going to make the numbers 1, 2, and 3. And then in the third column, I am going to put a bunch of names like Wayne, Ben, Jonathan. Great. Then what I will do is press Control X to exit, and it will ask me if I want to save. I do want to save, and I can call the file whatever I want. In this case, I'm going to call the file, hi mom. Now, once again, I can take a look at my file by cat or less. I'm going to use cat here, and once again, I can tab complete by simply typing the word hi and then finishing it up. So here, cat will allow me to look at that file. I can make another file if I like. And this one, I'm going to make a comma separated value file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a different string of numbers. I'm sorry, letters. and a different string of numbers. Oops. Oh, I told you I would make this a comma separated file. So I'm going to simply do this. And I'm going to use some different names. By the way, these are all names of people that have contributed to this course. So this is my way of thanking them. So what else can I do with these files? Well, you've seen the cat command. But what cat actually stands for is concatenate. Once again, we can look at the man page, um, which is kind of humorous because it is man cat. We can see 
what cat is capable of. The main thing that people use cat for is to join different files. So we could concatenate hi mom and fake CSV. However, the problem, as we will see later, is that these two files have different delimiters. To recap, we've made a bunch of files in the directory here. We can check what those files are by typing ls-ltr. Remember that we have the two files, hi mom and fake CSV, that look like this. One thing we might want to do, and this is very common in genomics, is change the delimiters in one of these files so it matches the other one. There are many ways to do this. One way would be to use sed, and another way would be to use tr. When I was putting together this presentation, I considered using sed to do this. However, upon Googling it, it became very obvious by looking at Stack Overflow that it is fairly complicated to use sed for this process, but by using tr, it's a very, very simple thing. So I'm going to show you how to use, do this using tr. Also, Stack Overflow is an invaluable resource for asking simple Linux and programming questions. So using tr, I can actually simply take the command from Stack Overflow. I can copy it here and paste it in here. Now, one thing I need to do is replace the file name with my actual file name and replace whatever they were trying to replace in the original question in Stack Overflow with the character I'm interested in. And now we can see that we get the command we wanted. So one thing we could do is we could replace the output that we just saw to an intermediate file called foo10 and cat hi mom and foo10 to either an output or a file. The nice thing about having a file called foo10 is then I know that later on I can probably delete this file. Now that I have my file called bar100 and then look at bar100 but say I had a file that was a million lines long. There's several things I might want to know how to do with it. For one thing, I might just want to look at the first five lines. One way to do that would be to type head-5 and bar 100. Or I could look at the last three lines. I could do that by typing tail dash 3, bar 100. If I type this, bar 100, I am going to get something totally incorrect. So the best thing to do in this case is to tab complete what I want. Here I can see that I've tab completed bar. If I press tab two more times, I can see that there's a file bar and a file bar 100. So if I type 1, I can tab complete bar 100. So once again, now I have the last three lines of bar 100. This is very important when you use large files. You could also sort bar 100. And what you would get are these lines in alphabetical order for the first column. You can also sort by column 2 by typing sort k2. For more information on that, you could check out 
command page of sort. One thing we might want to check out is this option, numeric sort. So we can see that even though it's sorted all the lines on these values, it puts 100 and 1,000 and 10,000 between 1 and 2. So what we can do is add the end flag after sort. And now we see that it does an actual numeric sort. Let's check what files we have made so far. One thing I would like to show you now is how to use pipes. I have really co-opted quite a bit of this discussion from Software Carpentry. So thank you to Greg Wilson and his associates. So once again, I can take the head of bar 100 by typing head to bar 100. And I can get the tail of that by typing in bar 100. But say I wanted to get the two middle lines of bar 100. One easy way to do that would be to take head 2 of bar 100, sorry, head 4 of bar 100, and then take the last two lines of this. I can do that with a simple character called a pipe. So what I can then do is take head 4, tail 2. And that will give me the two middle lines of this file. I find that to be extremely useful. Additionally, I could use this in conjunction with the sort command. So if I wanted the two first names in alphabetical order, I could add sort k3 to the beginning of my command, like this, and I said I wanted the first two names of bar 100. So, however, this command is wrong. And it is a common mistake students make with pipes. The reason this command is wrong is because this has to refer to the file in the first command. If I type enter, this will simply hang, and I will need to press control C. What I will then do is correct this. And we'll create it. What I will then do is correct this by moving the file name into the first command. And as we can see, this command now works perfectly. Another thing I can do is I can search for something in a file. So if we look at bar 100, perhaps we'd like to search for the line that contains the name Monica. If you're starting to do genomics work, you can easily imagine ways you would want to search very large files or cases in which you might want to search very large files. For that, I use the command grep. And I can grep for the term Monica in this file. And I, it will print me out the line that contains the name Monica. If I wanted to grep any name with the character M in it, I can look at the file. Typically, I wouldn't look at a big file. And then I would grep the character M bar 100. Now, one problem with that is if there was an M anywhere else in the file, it would also print those lines. If you want more information about how to specify those searches, please check out the grep man page. There are many, many options, and it is very, very powerful. So say we then we wanted to grep the lines with names starting with M, just like we did, 
but then we wanted to sort by the first column. We could do that very easily by piping the grep command to the sort command as we learned in the last example. So now that we've seen how to pipe two commands together, we can make what is called a bash script with these two commands. What we can do is echo repm r100 into my first script. And you want to end it with the suffix dot sh. So then what we can do is run that script by typing bash and then tab completing the file name. And we get exactly the same output we did when we ran it from the command line. For those of you who are new to Linux, congratulations, you've written your first computer program. Another neat thing we can do is go into our script by using nano. And we can replace m with a variable. In this case, we can use $1. We'll exit, and we'll save it. Then we put in a variable for $1. So in this case, we can use m. We could also use w or e. I encourage you to try this at home. So now you've written a script with a variable. Now that we've written a script, I'd like to show you another command and then come back to our script. So another thing we might want to do is just to print the first column of a particular file, or the second column, or the third column. There are many ways to do this in Linux, but I like to use something called awk. Awk is a programming language which can be used to do many things. One reason that awk is important in genomics is there are instances like in epigenomics where you may want to cut the fourth or fifth column of a three million line file. In the next two minutes, it should become apparent how you might do this with awk. So for example, I could say awk print dollar one R100. That would give me dollar one. As I'm sure you can guess, if I use print dollar two or print dollar three, I get similar results. The nice thing is I can also print dollar one and separate it with a comma from dollar three. Hence, it should be intuitive how you could add or delete a column of fixed things. For example, once. Let me show you that explicitly. So if I want to insert a column of ones into my file, I could simply do that by replacing the comma with space, one space, and press enter. One common application of Linux in genomics is finding each element of a column from one file in another file. One way to do this is to use a for loop with grep and awk. In the final lesson of this particular lecture, that's what we'll go over. So first, let's define a va variable by saying for i in backtick awk print dollar three foo ten back tick. So what we've said here is for each item in column three, we find a variable i in a loop. We're gonna do and then we're gonna say echo i done. So this is simply going to print each item in the third column of foo10. 
Now, using the same logic, I could also grep I into bar 100. And I see the results we would expect. Finally, to obtain a similar result, one could call the script that we previously wrote. And we see that again, we get the intended result. Thank you very much. I hope this has been a useful introduction to Linux. This should give you the basics to be able to execute all of the commands in the next four lectures as well as the hands-on. And I hope this will be, for those of you new to Linux, this will be a jumping off point to being able to process lots of data sets on the command line. Thanks and have a nice day.